Hi everybody, it's Stephanie. And today I wanna to take a little bit of a break from the usual to talk about a topic that has been at the back of my mind for quite a long time. And that is the difference between Blurple and Indigo. So one of my biggest pet peeves is when somebody is talking about a Blurple polish and somebody else interrupts them or calls them out and says, that's not Blurple, that's Indigo. Stop saying Blurple. There's a lot of reasons that this bugs me. Uh, the biggest one is that language is incredibly malleable. People make up new words all the time and Blurple is a very descriptive word. It describes something very tangible, a polish that is purple very close to blue, or blue very close to purple, somewhere in that zone where we can't really differentiate the two. Also, when I hear somebody say that, I can't help but think about indigo dye. So indigo dye is a dye that is derived from plants. It's been around for a very long time, and it is this deep blue color. And some people even describe it as a bluish green. I think that it has to do with where you get the indigo from, what plant you get it from, things like that. But for most sakes, indigo is blue dye. So why do we think about indigo as being somewhere between blue and purple? Well, for that, we can thank Sir Isaac Newton. So in the 1660s, Sir Isaac Newton started playing around with prisms. He shone a light through a prism onto his wall and he saw the rainbow and he could see five distinct colors. There was red, there was yellow, there was green, there was blue, there was violet. Not purple. Uh, purple's a whole different story. I'm going to be using the word purple because colloquially we use the term purple for violet to true purple. But when we're usually talking about purple, we're usually talking about violet just like in general. So I'm just going to like leave that there. We're just going to be calling violet purple in this video, especially because we're talking about blurples here. So anyway, he did the rainbow. He saw the colors. Uh, but the thing about Isaac Newton is that he really wanted the colors of the visible spectrum to line up with a musical chord of some type. You can see him talk about this a lot in his book Optics. He's always trying to relate the wavelengths of light to a musical chord and match them up. Some people say that he was infatuated with the mystical concepts of the number seven, but that is harder for me to find tangible proof of than his just constant rambling about how the colors of the spectrum need to match up with this certain chord he had in mind. So as you can probably imagine, over the years, there was a lot of skepticism as to whether or not indigo should even be on the color spectrum because he did add two halftones, which are orange, which like nobody seems to be up on arms about, and then indigo. So I learned about that, but then I wanted to learn more about the modern color spectrum and where indigo is on that spectrum. In modern times, most organizations that recognize indigo on the color spectrum, and it's important to note that not all of them do, they put it approximately between 425 and 450 nanometers on the visible spectrum. So over here is a graph of the visible spectrum from Britannica.com. So I found this and I thought it'd be a pretty accurate one because it was from Britannica.com. And I found where indigo would be on this scale. And as you can see, it's right here. And something struck me about that. That's really not blurple. The very, very tail end right there at 425, that's getting kind of into blurple territory, but only the very tip. So I've now put what I would consider to be blurple. Uh, let me know if you disagree. I looked at a bunch of different visible spectrum graphs and I started to kind of think I was going crazy because none of them put indigo into this blurple territory except for like the very, very edge of it. I started to worry that maybe the color on my screens was off. So I tried it on a variety of different screens, but every single time the color to my eye really wasn't blurple. So why is that? Well, according to Gary Waldman, author of Introduction to Light, The Physics of Light, Vision, and Color, a careful reading of Newton's work indicates that the color he called indigo we would normally call blue. His blue is then what we would name blue-green or cyan. So this makes sense to me. I already knew that our general cultural perspective of what a primary color is 
is generally false. So the primary blue and the primary red that we think of will mix to make the colors they're supposed to. However, those colors will be kind of muddy, a little bit brown, and that's because they're not really the primary colors. What are the primary colors? Well, you just have to look at your printer. Do you ever run out of red ink? Do you ever run out of blue ink? Probably not. You probably run out of cyan and magenta. That's because your printer does not care about cultural norms. It wants the correct color every time. And those are the actual primary colors. So it makes a lot of sense to me that the idea of blue may have been kind of twisted over time to be more in the indigo space which means that indigo isn't blurple and it never really was. So where does that leave us as lovers of color, as lovers of nail polish, as lovers of arguing with each other on the internet? Uh, should you stop using indigo to talk about blurples? Well, like I said at the beginning of this video, correcting the words that other people use that are widely used terms is a bit of a pet peeve of mine. So no, if blurple is indigo to you, that's fine. Let your freak flag fly, whatever. Language is all made up. And the important thing is that we're all communicating clearly. I still remember when Merriam Webster changed the definition of literally to include its use in exaggeration or as an emphasis in times when literally does not actually mean literally and people lost their ever loving minds. But the thing is, is that the dictionary is not the word police. <laughs> uh, they're not coming around and telling you to stop using words or use words differently. The dictionary is a reference to how people use words. It doesn't care if that's what the origin of the word was. I mean, etymology it does, but for definition, it doesn't matter. It needs to be accurate so that if somebody hears someone say literally, in a figurative sense, they can then go to the dictionary and look it up and see, oh, sometimes literally means literally. And sometimes people are having a lull and they're just going to use it as figuratively or an exaggeration. It's important to know those things so that we can communicate better. So is it wrong to say that blurple is indigo? Not really. That is kind of how we view it as a society. But if you hear somebody talking about a bluish purple or a purplish blue and they call it blurple and you interrupt them and say, no, that's not blurple, that's indigo. Well, nine times out of 10, you are literally just going to be wrong. Just like flat out wrong. So my hot take today is maybe just don't do it. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me today. I know this is a shorter one and a little bit of a different one, but this is something that's been on my mind for literally years, and I am so glad to get it off my chest. I finally decided that we needed to make a video about it around the time that I did my favorite purples video, and here it is. So yeah, if you had a really good time, please uh, give this video a like and you can give me all your hot takes about Blurple and Indigo in the description. I know a lot of people just like don't like the sound of the word Blurple, um, just like a lot of people don't like the sound of the word moist. But you know, I love me some moist Blurples up in this house. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't really bother me at all. Anyway, hit that like button, subscribe, uh, catch me on Twitch, catch me on Instagram, uh, check out my podcast. It's called Two Lacquered Ladies. I do it with my friend Danny Shout, and it is super fun. Anyway, have a really amazing day. Be excellent to each other, and I will catch you on the flip side. Bye-bye.